It is. I mean, she'll be officially leaving office at 3 p.m. local time, so in a matter of hours, she had her official goodbye a military tattoo in which some of her favorite songs were played, including a 1970s hit by Nina Hagen, uh, who was an East German uh, musician who became a punk rocker. Germans have been saying goodbye to her for a while now. She remains immensely popular, one of the most popular politicians in Germany. But all eyes now are on her successor, her former finance minister and vice chancellor Olaf Scholz, a social democrat who will be voted into office. There'll be a vote in the Bundestag, the parliament. The 736 members of the German parliament will vote in a secret ballot. There's no surprise expected uh, as to the results because he's leading a three-party coalition which has more than a majority and everybody is massively behind the coalition deal that unites these three parties, the Greens and the Free Democrats as well, the pro-business party along with the Social Democrats. And then after that, he and his cabinet are sworn in in Bellevue, the presidential palace by Frank Walter Steinmeier. They'll come back and he will make a speech to the Bundestag to explain where he intends to lead the country in the next four years. Yeah, let's look ahead then, Nick. I mean, what uh, is in the in-tray, if you like? What's he got on his plate? He's got an awful lot. Like every other leader in the world, he's got the pandemic to deal with. And Germany is in its fourth wave. And the big news is they're looking at making uh, vaccinations mandatory, which is a bit controversial. Could happen as big as big in, as early, pardon me, uh, as February. Uh, but the you know 170 plus page coalition agreement is entitled Dare More Progress, so social democratic and green in large part, raising the minimum wage to 12 euros an hour, uh, digitalizing the country, rolling back the coal usage in this country, making it disappear by 2030, uh, making 80% of energy coming from renewables by 2030 as well, making it easier to become German. That's important for a lot of Turks who came over as guest workers before legalizing marijuana, uh, lowering the voting age to 16. So basically, you know, making the country uh, more progressive, if you will, uh, more green, and also remaining competitive as well. That's one thing that the the Free Democrats who are pro-business are really keen on. Their leader has the finance ministry. He's against tax and spend spot policies. So the big sort of balancing act in this new government is going to be how do you deliver on all these promises and not go into debt or borrow too much. That's really going to be the tightrope they're walking, uh, as well as, of course, the pandemic, which is really challenge number one. Just a few things on the list then. Thanks very much, Nick. Nick Spicer, a correspondent uh, talking to you.